be a successful content creator, you need to overcome your fears. As I've talked to all the creators, it's clear. The one thing that they fear the most is appearing on camera. Most people tie in being good on camera with their appearance or how they look. The good news is that being good on camera isn't about appearance, it's about confidence. Even beautiful people like myself need to develop skills and practices that make us more comfortable on camera. So in this video, I'm gonna give all the creators some tips and exercises that they can use to become more confident on camera. If we haven't met, aloha, I'm Robbie, a 50 year old full-time content creator. I've been making content for over 10 years and now I teach all the creators the skills and confidence that they need to become full or part-time content creators themselves. Before we conquer being confident on camera, we need to talk about why you're scared of being on the camera in the first place. Unless you're a public speaker, or an actor, or a CEO, you probably don't have experience talking in front of people. When the world shut down and we were having all of our meetings on screen, you probably started to recognize the importance of being good on camera. How many Zoom meetings did you sleep through? Everybody who's ever been in front of a camera is exactly where you are right now, freaking Terrified. But when you take away the lens, we're pretty comfortable chatting with people face to face. What is it about the camera lens that makes us freeze up? In my experience, it comes from the human fears of being shamed, mocked, embarrassed, or being picked on in front of other people. Thanks for nothing, middle school. For all the people transitioning into content creation, we fear that we're going to be judged. We focus on the perception that other people are going to have of us. What if my boss finds out? What if my old college crush notices that I'm doing this? What are they gonna think? Take it from me, I had the exact same fears. Do you know how many nasty comments I got? Zero, none. The secret is that nobody actually cares what you're doing with your life. We are so wrapped up in ourselves and our problems and our struggles that we really don't have time to focus on other things. If anyone says anything to you, it is about their insecurities and not yours. They're envious of you trying something different while they dwell in what they think has gone wrong with their life. They're just taking all their insecurities out on you. Being afraid of what people may think of you is holding you back. But after you've overcome that, it's time to move on to another question. What do you say in front of the camera? I'm a creator that does UGC, user generated content. Basically, that's short form video ads. For my projects, either I write the script or the brand gives it to me. Sometimes I'll do voiceover, which is me just reading the script and it doesn't matter what I look like when I'm speaking that, which is a shame because I'm just so pretty. People are missing out. <laughs> If you want to make short form or YouTube videos, you may be tempted to do the entire thing without a script. You may have thoughts like, I can't memorize stuff, or I don't want to come off as scripted, or I just don't have time to write a script. Early creators believe that not writing a script is a time saver. It's just complete BS. Not writing a script makes the entire process longer. When you wing it, you don't have your thoughts collected and then you may run out of things to say. You might forget something and all of that rambling is something you have to edit out and that takes time. At the very least, write an outline. This is a bullet pointed list of what you want to say. I write entire scripts. Sometimes I don't say them word for word because what I write down and what I say is sometimes completely different. See, that was not scripted. So, <laughs> try writing an outline Try writing a script, see what works for you. But now that you know what you're going to say, how do you say it? When I see new creators get behind the camera, there's kind of one or two outcomes that happen. Hi, I'm Robbie, and welcome to my channel. Please like and subscribe. Hey, I'm Robbie, welcome to my channel. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe. I'm sure you see the problem with both of those. One is, is too small and the other is definitely too big. You're not talking to a room full of people. You're talking to one person on an individual level. One thing that will make you more confident on camera is developing your presentation style. And that starts with body language. Keeping your hands by your side like this is the worst. You feel stiff. Think of yourself as a conductor and you're moving your hands in time with your words. Expressing things with your hands keeps the viewer engaged and you automatically feel more present and focused in talking to the camera. Those movements help you calm your body and make you come off more energetic and confident. 
So now you know what to say and how to use your body to display that confidence. There's just one more thing, hitting record and speaking into the lens. I am not gonna sugarcoat this, this is terrifying. We're used to reading facial expressions. When we talk to somebody, we see if they understand or don't understand what we're talking about. With a lens, it's just a piece of glass that gives you no information or feedback whatsoever. A lot of people say that you should speak to the lens like it's a friend or like you're talking to somebody on FaceTime. That has never worked for me. You don't really want to sound natural because the natural is full of awkward pauses like this that my poor editor has to cut out constantly. Sorry. I describe my on-camera style as an enthusiastic hobbyist. My mindset is that I'm sharing a hobby or a part of my collection that I'm really proud of. Here's an example. People like to collect things. I'm big into Funko Pops and NHL jerseys. The big thing I am into is, is hockey pucks. And let me tell you the story of my prized possession. Many years ago, I found myself sitting next to the Anaheim Ducks bench right on the glass. During the game, there was a stoppage because a puck went into the bench. I clearly remember looking at the assistant trainer, picking up that puck, looking over to the head trainer like, what should I do with this? I clearly remember that trainer pointing at me. The other trainer flipped this puck over the, the glass. Yeah, I have a game used hockey puck, which is thousands of baseball games I've been to and I've never got any anywhere close to getting a foul ball or a home run. Having a game used puck by my favorite team is, this is something I, I will always treasure. Did you see how easy that flowed? I wasn't presentery, I wasn't, I wasn't on a FaceTime call. I was generally talking about something that I was passionate about. This is something you need to practice. Sit down in front of a camera, don't turn it on, and just start talking about something that you have in your collection, whatever you collect. You can watch as many YouTube videos on speaking or courses on speaking. None of that is going to matter unless you commit to sitting down and practicing in front of the camera and doing it again and again. Just one of these tips is going to vastly improve your on-camera confidence. But what if you do get a nasty comment by somebody? How do you deal with that? Click on this video to learn how to deal with the haters. Haters.